And myth number seven is, again, there's a little bit of truth and a little bit of lie to this. Uh, soy products are dangerous to health. And I can tell you, um, one of the things that upsets me about the big anti-soy movement is the anti-soy movement, you can trace almost every single anti-soy message back to the Weston A. Price Foundation, and they, they are as anti-vegetarian as it gets, <laughs> you know? Uh, they want people to eat a lot of meat. And so vegetarians are getting on their bandwagon and shooting themselves in the foot. Because soy, soy products actually can provide a really good, very high quality protein for vegetarians. So the allegations uh, concerning soy are that it increases risk of breast cancer, thyroid problems, cognitive dysfunction, and it causes men to look like girls. <laughs> Question number one, does soy increase the risk of breast cancer? Well, you know, why did we get concerned? Well, there were some animal studies that had very, very mixed findings in terms of breast cancer. Some suggesting that one soy isoflavone in particular promoted estrogen positive uh, breast cancer tumor growth. Many physicians, because of those animal studies, said women with estrogen positive breast cancer should not consume soy at all. So have you heard that before? Yeah. Well, guess what? We've got some human studies. And we've got human studies on, on children, particularly in Asia. And, and what, what we found is that children and teens who consume soy in their childhood have a very significant reduction in the risk of breast cancer as an adult. So we thought that was kind of interesting. But this one here is the most interesting study of all. 2009, brand new study. Over 5,000 women were followed for about four years. The women who ate the most soy had the lowest mortality rates and the lowest recurrence rate compared to the women that consumed the least soy. The highest soy intakes um, in, in women who didn't take tamoxifen was associated with better outcomes than the lowest soy intake in women who took the drug. And this now, this has ruffled a few, I mean, this has got people's attention because this is a large study and the findings were very, very strong. So this data suggests that minimally processed but not highly processed soy foods are safe for women with breast cancer. And there are several reports and, and commentaries by oncologists now on this study and they, they tend to be very positive. Uh, there's insufficient data to suggest that soy should be used as a treatment to reduce, you know, risk of metastases or to increase survival. We just don't have quite enough data to make those kind of statements yet. But I think people who are vegetarian and vegan can feel okay about continuing to consume moderate amounts of soy with ER positive breast cancer. So what about um, thyroid uh, problems? And this is another biggie with soy. Soy contains something called goitrogens, and these are things that impair the absorption or, or the uptake of iodine by the thyroid. Okay, and now soy is not the only thing that contains goitrogens. I, there are probably 50 different foods that can, or 100 different foods that contain goitrogens. Almost all cruciferous vegetables, cabbage, broccoli, all of that family, cauliflower, they all contain goitrogens. Uh, flax seeds contain goitrogens, millet contains goitrogens, cassava contains, it's just a long, long list of foods that contain goitrogens. So soy is not unique in, in that it contains goitrogens. Um, in this, the goitrogens in food tend only to be a problem if your diet is marginal in iodine. So if you have suboptimal iodine status, having goitrogens on top of that could put you into uh, hyper or hypothyroidism. Okay, so that's, it's not generally a concern for healthy individuals who do con consume reliable sources of iodine. So what about your brain? Does soy hurt your brain? There was actually one study in Hawaii, do you remember the Dr. White study in Hawaii several years ago? Showed that people who consumed the most tofu had more um, problems with brain function as seniors. And so this created some real serious concerns. Now the problem with this study is they looked at soy intake uh, 20 years before the end of the study. I think it was in the 1970s or something. They looked at it and the study came out in the 90s. And so th th 
And they didn't look at amounts consumed. They didn't look whether or not the tofu was deep fried. They didn't consider that the people that were eating the tofu were poor people uh, who worked in factories that had a lot of chemicals. And there were all kinds of factors. But this was an epidemiological study. And as you know, if you're in a science at university, you know that epidemiological studies do not prove cause and effect. You know, they don't prove, prove cause and effect. So um, we have some clinical studies. And there were at least three clinical studies, good clinical studies, since this study looking at soy and isopyl bones. And in every single one of them, they actually found that soy intake actually improved cognitive function and memory. Uh, and, and also, just think about this. The rates of dementia and other problems of memory and so on are actually lower in Asian countries than in Western countries. And of course, in Asia, the average soy consumption is much higher than in, in North America. And the SDA or Seventh-day Adventists who have higher intakes of soy also have less dementia than the general population. So just a couple of, couple of things there. Now, this one here I thought was kind of funny. Does soy cause feminization in men? And the concern is that the isoflavones um, may adversely affect uh, male reproductive health, may cause males to grow boobs, uh, whatever, to just cause those kinds of problems. There was actually, the evidence for that is one case report in a man consuming three liters of soy milk a day. Uh, he started to get some feminizing effects. There was a study finding reduced sperm count among infertile men with a, so a high soy intake. And there were several studies on rats that showed some problems with soy intake and reproductive capacity. And so this created some, definitely some, some stir. However, there have been considerable, uh, there has been considerable clinical evidence that shows that isoflavone exposure at levels even exceeding reasonable soy intakes doesn't affect, affect, affect blood testosterone levels or estrogen levels in men. It did not affect sperm or semen parameters. So at this point in time, there, there, there have been a number of really good clinical studies just to, to check all of this out. We have a couple of studies that soy may reduce the risk of prostate cancer by as much as 70%. And preliminary evidence suggests that soy also reduces prostate cancer metastases. So kind of interesting just to, to keep your eye um, peeled on that. Uh, and the question, can soy be part of a, uh, a healthy diet? And uh, you know what? I was in Taiwan. I actually was a keynote speaker for the International Suchi Medical Association, speaking on diet, my diabetes research in the Marshall Islands. I got this meal at the hospital. <laughs> they actually serve people healthy food. <laughs> there are bins of greens like this. It's just bin after bin of greens. I was just in shock. I was in awe of what they were doing. And look at brown, right? Like, I just couldn't believe it. But anyway, it's really quite amazing. Um, and, and of course, the answer is absolutely. If, if you, unless, of course, you're allergic to soy. But if you look at people like the Okinawan Japanese, the, they are considered the healthiest, the traditional Okinawans. It started to change. Healthiest, longest living people on the planet. Their daily diet is seven servings of vegetables, seven servings of whole grains, two servings of soy, and fish, but very little meat or, or dairy. So there are some, also some interesting potential health benefits. And one of them being uh, re risk reduction for cardiovascular disease. When you replace animal protein with soy protein, a lot of fairly interesting things happen. And one of them is cholesterol reduction, inflammation. You get a reduction in inflammation. You, uh, certainly, there's some really good evidence that soy protein is helpful in terms of osteoporosis. When you replace animal protein with soy protein, you get improvements in every indicator of kidney function. Uh, and I already mentioned the prostate cancer. But it may also provide some benefits for menopausal symptom relief and get this one, male pattern baldness. <laughs>